Hello and welcome to the Imagine a Life. In today's episode, I had the opportunity to speak with positive psychology practitioner and life coach Kaylee Bronkhorst. After a stint as a professional yachting crew member, she immersed herself in the study of positive psychology. She fell in love with the concepts and its potential to transform lives. She found the tools and practices helped build her resilience and helped her overcome challenging times. She founded Beyond Content, her life coaching practice, so she can share the power of positive psychology with others. Here's my conversation with Kaylee. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, Kaylee. Welcome to the show. And Hi, thank, thank you, you once so much again. For me. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad you're here. So I just wanted to say, first of all, that I do appreciate for you saying yes to be part of this and for giving us the time to share, you know, some of the things that you're also doing right now as a coach and as a positive psychology practitioner. So as I was reading through your bio, I noticed that you've had quite an adventure. Like you've you've led a few adventurous things in your life. And one of the things that actually really picked my interest is the your your stint as a professional yachting crew. <laughs> so yes. just to just to kick off this conversation a little bit, do you have like a, a fun story to share with us? Uh, to start with? What was that like? Well, uh- That whole adventure has been wild. My life's been very varied, I'd say, with my experiences. I've definitely lived outside the box. And yachting was was a wonderful adventure. It was a a glimpse into the luxury side of things, a way to see the world and kind of get paid to do it. It was the first time in my life that I was like, all about me. I'm just going to go live for me. And then ironically, I um, meet and fall in love with my husband on my very Mm. first boat. So, <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's really Yeah, that's that's a fun that's a fun story though. Yeah, this it, Oh, absolutely. First, first boat and first you actually boat. met your husband on that. The first things you tell yachting. yourself you won't do, you know? <laughs> No, but I do admire that kind of like wild setting off like a wild adventure in search for something, finding whatever, probably that thing that you're searching for, right? Exactly. And I know that you also, you have a background in psychology. Yeah. And my background's in clinical yeah. psych and criminal justice, okay. actually, which is also yeah. buried. <laughs> so, um, so how did you get back to from having that background in psychology and then you did a little bit of that in between you know, in search for something. And after that, you went to positive psychology. Isn't that right? Yes. That in between, I always say it's kind of like me searching for what makes life worth living for me. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, what what's the point? What fulfills me? What fuels my soul? And I've always had a yearning to see the world and experience as much as I can. I think the world's all about connections and experiences. So it was right. a chance to really meet people from other walks of life, which was lovely. All of that being said, I found myself six years into it, still feeling like I was missing something. Like there was there was a hole that wasn't being fulfilled. And it was really during COVID times that I was reflecting on, I'm like, what's missing here? And it was the piece of, I love people and I love watching people thrive. Like there's nothing that gives me more of like a positive burst of energy and like just fulfilled happiness than seeing somebody else like in their element achieving their dreams. And that's really what was missing. I mean, as as fun as it can be seeing different places mm-hmm. and popping champagne for billionaires, it just wasn't serving my purpose. And that calling as I got older was getting louder. So I knew I wanted to go back to working with people. Positive psychology is something that kind of fell on my doorstep right at the right time and was Mm -hmm. exactly what I was looking for. Because I really do think that people aren't broken, and they're not missing anything. And the part of psychology working in like clinical mental health before Mm -hmm. was very much just diagnosing what was wrong Mm -hmm. and getting people to live with the absence of that and not about building on their strengths and their passions and creating a fulfilled life with Mm -hmm. no cap to it. So yeah, I, I, it fell in my doorstep. Somebody introduced me to the Flourishing Center. 
literally within two days, I figured out how to get the money for the program and signed <laughs> up for it. Started a little late, as you remember. And it, it just, oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it is everything that like, that I was looking for. Cause I knew I uh-huh. wanted to work more, more with like, I don't know, at that point I was calling it the worried well, but now I'm just thinking it's people that, that know that there's more in life and want more and are willing to search within themselves for it and be open to new experiences. And I, yeah, positive psychology is perfect for that. <laughs> That's pretty cool that you're able to actually find something and acted on it. I think I think that's the that's the difference though. I mean, each one at some point probably would feel that way that oh, something's missing and um no matter what I do, it's like it's just not fitting in. Right. Yeah. Like you mentioned, it's okay, I am here in a wild adventure when you were doing your yadding, and then uh like you said this is not serving my purpose because, right. you know, I want to experience the world, but at the same time, I also want to see other people thrive. So it's not, it's not everyone who get to also find what that missing piece is. Right. So I think it's great that you're able to at least find that. And, 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 and I mean, as long as we're alive, we're constantly like looking or, you know, improving and doing stuff. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, would help us out. So, and psych- positive psychology is one of those things for you. I know that you have also in in your in your journey, right? In terms of uh, the positive psychology path, you have or you have written or made or created a journal, yes. right? And it's, yes. it's a self care yes. journal. Is that right? It is. It is a daily self care journal. It's it's one of my many ideas of ways to put the positive message of turning inwards to yourself and empowering people to know that they have everything they need within them. And this is something that I've been wanting to put out for a long time. And Mm -hmm. it's actually not the journal that I've been working on forever, but pieces of it. And I decided to like, kind of uncomplicate it a lot in my brain and put out what I knew people could benefit from in a like a not scary, super committal way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I like I look at this as a soft opening to getting to know yourself and creating a new perspective for yourself and a new way to gain a relationship with you. I kind of look at it as creating a date to hang out with yourself for at least 10 minutes a day, that. once a day, and an opportunity to cultivate the you that you would most love to hang out with. And I think if you look at it that way, it's not like something that I have to do. It's like, yay, I have a date with me <laughs> and I can't <laughs> wait to see what's in me that I can pull out today. So it's it's written in a way that like you could breeze through it, just check off. It's really, you can put as little or as much into it as you want. The props are very broad and you could choose to dive in deep on some days or just kind of graze through it. But either way, if you zoom out to the big picture of what it is, it's giving people an opportunity to just create awareness around where there might not have been. And just just simply by putting that into your daily focus, even if you're doing the bare minimum, you are essentially giving your brain a mission to start seeing things differently. And that I was like, that's what I'm trying to do. Don't overcomplicate it. Get this out there and and build on that, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I love that you, I love that you did mention that don't overcomplicate because we do overcomplicate things. And I think there's a tendency of, you know, each one is that wanting to create something, but then spend so much time just uh, ruminating on that because, you know, for some reason, like, oh, what would other people say? Or, oh my God, this is not going to be good or somebody else is going to do it better. So I'm really also curious about what was that process in between like? So, I mean, you said that, oh, this is not the final journal that I right. wanted in the first place to bring out. So, but then you said, okay, let me start something. Let I, I want to bring something out. And how did that, like, what was going on in your head when you were trying to? I think I, bring that it out? was the, I don't want to say the pressure, but like a strong yearning and calling to just get the message out there and start to switch people's brains. You know what I mean? 
and that it didn't need to be like a full positive psychology boot camp that I, yeah. in my head, needed it to be. Like I, I would consider myself a chronic overthinker and overfeeler. And just like I teach my clients, like if you zoom out, zoom out of the room, zoom out of the computer, zoom out of the building into the big experience of like what it is, what are you trying to achieve with this? And really simplified it into a way that will be more usable for people, more welcoming for people to step into and not overwhelm them. Like a lot of people pick up self-help books and journals and the chances of you doing it, if it's looked at as like a big obstacle, a big chore, a big thing to switch, the chances of you falling through with it on a regular basis, it goes down. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think for me, it was just, what am I doing this for? And what do I want people to walk away from using it with? So really, I it, it took a lot of a lot of work editing my own <laughs> yeah. brain. <laughs> oh, gosh. But I'm I'm happy with what I put out there. And I think it's just like I said, it's an invitation for people to just start to look at themselves with grace, compassion and curiosity. And then they can build on that in whatever way they'd like once the door is open. Yeah, lovely. And you mentioned about, you know, grace, having putting giving yourself grace, giving yourself compassion in, in moments when you feel overwhelmed in mm-hmm. creating and putting something out there. Because like you said, you know, it's hard to because when you are in the thick of it, all you ever think about is just this, it's magnified. Right. right. And you said something about let's zoom out for a bit. Why are we doing this in the first place? Exactly. Because it becomes like, oh, I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it because of, you know, it, it, sometimes it's not even about, we just lose focus on what was important in the first place, right? So That's when exactly you first started out, probably it's going to be, oh, I'm going to, you know, somebody is going to do this and this is what the turnout is going to be, more self-awareness, more self-care, mm-hmm. et cetera. But then eventually it turned out to be, <laughs> suddenly you're you're so into it that right the, the fear became so big and that it's Huge. actually stopping you. Yeah. The, <laughs> I mean, the other journal was part of my final project for CAP, for the Positive Psychology Program. And it's, I love what I've created there. But for me, it's, I had lost focus, honestly. And it had become more about me and me showing myself to the mm-hmm, world and mm-hmm, everything mm-hmm. that I know and have experienced and have learned and really was taking away from this isn't for me. This isn't about me. This is about who I'm creating it for. It's about the people that can benefit from it. And looking at it from that perspective, the taking a lot out of it actually made it more effective in that way. You know what I mean? It makes it more welcoming for people to step into. And that's really what it's about. It's just an invitation, a soft opening <laughs> like this. You, right. know, you don't have to go to like a boot camp, you know, every day <laughs> a week workout type thing. Just hang out with yourself for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and it's perfect because you do have that in your journal. It is about, like you said, it's just 10 minutes of like awareness every day. It's a date with yourself every day. Yeah. And it's not easy to have that, I mean, especially with all the information overload and and everything that's just like, I feel like I've consumed content, like my brain is so full of that I'm content. so with you. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and you're right. Like just having that kind of awareness every day to just set aside even just 10 minutes of your time to say, this is for me and I'm going to turn right. inward and I'm going to check in with myself. Like, how am I doing? What am I feeling? Right? So right. I think that's very important. And, and going back to what you said, I just wanted to like give, like summarize it a little bit. So it's importantly, you know, you can just start small or just begin. Right. And it's not so much about you, right? So just yeah, refocus, I guess. What mm. is this for? What is the, the essence of, of what you're doing, what you're creating? And you'll need grace and compassion. <laughs> Check in or tap into that because you'll right. be needing it as you go through the creative process. Exactly. So that's just the takeaways that I have. And had. if I can add yeah. to that, it's yeah. more it's more about like the ripple effect uh-huh. of what that 10 minutes of thinking about yourself does for the rest of your day. Because you could turn really any 
any practice into a practice of more self-awareness or self-love if you're coming at it from a different perspective. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's it's more about just knowing as you're going into your day, oh, I want to do an act of self-care or when something goes wrong in your day and those little, you know, threatening brain cells are going off to be able to zoom out or like, what am I going to write in the journal about this? Like just to look at it in a different way, which causes you to kind of act differently in the way that you are showing up in the world Um, and the way that you see yourself in the world and the way that you see the world looking at you. So that little 10 minutes a day, even if you don't dive in deep for those 10 minutes, just having planted that seed in your brain Mm -hmm. going throughout your day from there on out really does change things. It's, it's the little tiny things, um, just awareness of when we're being self-critical or judgmental of others or ourselves or putting too much pressure on. And yeah, just like that, like I said, the ability to zoom out and think about what really matters to you. What are your passions? What are your values? And stop being so hard on yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's a a very important reminder. Yeah, you mentioned about the habits and how these small little things that we do every day can you can build on that. And so that maybe it's not even 10 minutes, right? I mean, maybe five minutes, then the next day you can do more. And then day to day they keep adding to that. And next thing you know, it's ingrained or part of your routine. So Holy. I, yeah, so the, the the good thing about the, the journal is I've seen it and it's fairly simple. Like it doesn't Super require <laughs> a lot of, like you don't have to even like think so much because I mean, other journals, like there is a, I think there's a time for that. Like it depends on, so on your mood, right. And the attention exactly. that you, <laughs> you want to give to yes. it. But this one is, is like, just check in. Right. And it's, it's simple. And I think Super that's sometimes, simple. yeah, that's sometimes that's maybe just, just what we need, especially exactly. when it's so busy and you just, you know, don't have much time. It, ma- it makes it so it doesn't seem like you are forcing yourself to do something for yourself. You know what I mean? It's more of just like, a, oh, this is just part of my day. And like it, it can be quick and it's, it's opening you up to just seeing things differently throughout the rest of your day. And like you said, there, there are journals where you can dive in super deep and like the, the, the journaling prompts will help you, you know, discover shadow sides or whatever it is that you want to call it, all of the words for the same things. And this is in a way that like, if you get to there and you want to dive in, it's there for you to dive in deeper because it's, it's asking the questions that can bring that up for you. But if you don't want to and you're not Mm -hmm. ready for it, it's something that can like kind of evolve with you depending on it's just so you can create your own practice depending on where you are at in your journey. So this is kind of like I I, I don't want to say it's for beginners, but it's for anyone, anybody that like hasn't hasn't tried to do some sort of self-care practice before, doesn't feel like they have the time. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, great. So in terms of uh, journaling, I know there's a... There's a science behind it. One of the things that you mentioned and we talked about is that, you know, building awareness and it's also helping us have that habit. And at the same time, it could also be a way for, you know, relaxation, therapy, uh, introspection and allowing ourselves to be more reflective. Mm -hmm. So what are other, what are other benefits? I think that, you know, journaling. I think just taking that time to sit down with yourself and as I said before, just hang out with yourself is beneficial on its own. It's a, it's creating a moment of mindfulness for you, whether you are intending to do that or not. It's inviting you to reflect on your day from more of an outside perspective to kind of get, take your feelings out of a situation that might have been sticky or mm-hmm. dive deeper into what's behind those feelings. But it's it's creating, it's telling your brain that this is something that's important to you. That all of a sudden, like I care about who I am, where I I'm at, and how I want to show up in the world, and I'm putting action towards creating the me that I want. And Mm -hmm. your brain, your ego, whatever you want to call it, they're all on your side, even if they're misaligned. 
and it's it's giving it it's assigning it a job that will serve you today mm-hmm. as opposed to going with whatever going through the motions of life we in this fast paced world and you know the doomsday narrative that is very much getting pushed to us from different directions today with a lot of uncertainty it's it's a moment to step away from that and come back to what truly matters to you and simply by doing that your brain will now be scanning for those mm-hmm. positive things that can lead you in a, a good positive direction of possibilities and positivity instead of going with the flow of like getting having to ride the wave of life. Yeah. It's like it's mm-hmm. not it's not ignoring the negatives, but it's being able to navigate it in a way that makes sense for you. Yeah. Hey, yeah, thank you for thank you for that. I know that the journal is mostly on centering on self-care. Yeah. So I'm curious, what does self-care look like for you? My, my practices, just as everybody's, have been forever evolving. But I yeah. think for <laughs> for me, it has it's the awareness that literally any practice could be a self-care practice. It it depends on the perspective that you walk into it with. I think I even put in the journal at some point, but like the simple act of doing your dishes or making yourself dinner Mm -hmm. can be an act of self care Uh, as opposed to a chore and I must do and I have to do. If you look at it as I get to, like I get to nourish my body, I have the opportunity to create what I want that's enjoyable to me, tidying up the house, like I'm creating a space that I thrive in, that I love to hang out with in, like. Those simple things can be an act of self-care if you mm, walk mm-hmm. into those activities with that intent, as opposed to, oh, I have to do laundry again. Like, why does this happen every <laughs> week? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I can't um, and then me personally, <laughs> the things I have recently, I took a meditation course. It was Ziva Online. I'm not an mm-hmm. affiliate, but I fully recommend them. They're fantastic. And it, as I told you before, somebody that is a, chronic overthinker. My brain doesn't stop. So I've tried to start a meditation practice on my own many times and would quickly become very judgmental with myself. Mm -hmm. And it was doing the opposite of what it was meant to do. Cause I'm like, why can't I stop this? Like quiet brain, (laughs) this is not Mm -hmm. the time and really taught me a different way of doing that. So just 15 minutes at the start of the day, 15 minutes in the evening makes a big difference. But my soft opening to that was really I call it the hour of power. It's the 30 minutes before you go to bed at night and the 30 minutes when you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you can make those minutes filled with what you want in life, what you're striving for, what you love right now, and raise the vibration of those minutes in your Mm -hmm. world, you will see the the changes in, in your life. Like I... I can tell the difference because I was laughing at myself. When you first start these practices, it's like I'm talking to myself in my bed at night. Like, does this seem normal? (laughs) But you can literally see the difference when I don't tell myself, like, I intend to get a good night's sleep tonight and Mm -hmm. I intend to wake up rested and energized and ready to take on tomorrow. And before I get out of bed in the morning, I make sure I tell myself today is going to be a wonderful day. Everything is going to work out the way that I see it or better. I, like it sounds delusional, but it, these things work. <laughs> you're just, you're making a request to yourself. And as I said before, it's assigning your brain a mission to look for these positive opportunities. And you have to do nothing to do that. Like it, it does it on its own after you tell it to. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's how powerful the mind is. Yeah. And well, thank you for for sharing all this. I think these are yeah, sorry, many self practices. No, no, no. This is absolutely wonderful. I love this. I love the hour yeah. of power, the thirty minutes before bedtime, thirty minutes after you wake up, mm-hmm. because I, I this thing kind of I it this really resonated with me because you know there's that temptation of actually just using your phone right. The first thing, the first thing, waking up the phone. The last thing before going to bed is the phone, right? right. So, <laughs> so the hour of power will not only just like race that that feeling, the energy that you have mm-hmm. 
And then they allow you to like slow down, right? Before you sleep at night. But also at the same time, not have to be, the phone will not be the default. Exactly. Do that. Yeah. So that that's great. Like, it's providing you, you sure an opportunity <laughs> to create the space that you want to be in when you go to bed at night and the space that you want to be in when you start off your day without the outside influence and the noise. Right. Yeah. To just really have that, to own that part of the day and make it like, okay, it's, this is mine and this yeah. is sacred. Yeah. I think it's very important to have something like that. And folks, it's again. okay if you want to start with five minutes. It doesn't have to be 30 right. minutes. Yeah, it's 30 right. minutes. Right. Like anything, <laughs> like seriously, any yeah. little thing is a start. <laughs> right. Yeah. Even just a few minutes a day, a few yeah. minutes at night to do that. And so, so self-care um, is essential because it, like you said, there are, the way we define self-care is different for each one, right? So mm-hmm. some may be like, you know, you'll go to spa, get a massage, et cetera. Right. But like you said, it can be as simple as, you know, washing the dishes or doing the laundry mm-hmm. and changing the the mindset towards that. And I can relate to what you said about doing the laundry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, we're going to do the laundry today. Uh, and especially <laughs> cooking. <laughs> Like, oh yeah. my god, I have to cook. And that's today. never been my favorite, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so that's one thing about the and what intention are you bringing? Right. Yeah. And and when you're doing it, it's not a chore. Yeah, a chore is something energy wise is already heavy. Yes. Yeah. So it's like a, a choice that I am doing this. Right. right? Not because, For me, because um, I want yeah, to. Yeah, because I want to. <laughs> Not because I need to, I have to, oh, <laughs> that's right. the drudgery of, of doing stuff like that. But yeah, and that's another one wonderful thing to note about self-care. And I love it because it changes. It's it's uh, it's different from what we normally see as self-care. Yeah. So you don't have to go to the for... spa and get a pedicure. You don't have to spend money. Right. Anything yeah. Anything self-care. <laughs> and I really self-care. do think that it's the most important part of your life. Like. I have no doubt that the most impactful relationship you will have in this lifetime is the relationship that you have with yourself. Mm. And the most beautiful thing about that is you are fully in control of that. That is all on you. I like, and that is the thing that will be the most impactful, the most important, make the biggest difference in your life. So uh, it's just like, it's taking your power back. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, and doing that and just choosing each yeah. time and treat it like you're not enslaved towards it. You're not victimized exactly. by it. Right? <laughs> That's wonderful. Thanks for sharing the self-care practices. Um, okay, so we have like a few more minutes. And so just to wrap things up, do you have like a favorite go-to tool or practice? I know you've shared a bunch with us, but is there something that, you know, you'd like to, that every day is something you go back to, something simple ev- that we can all do? The every day, I think the thing when I started learning about positive psychology and practicing mm-hmm. it was just being aware throughout the day with my thoughts, mostly around myself is the way that I started it and and the, the way that I talk to myself and the things that I say out loud. And I actually noticed this past week that that's made a difference. Like I, for example, I, I hurt my back pretty bad last year and had mm-hmm. to have surgery. And I remember on a regular basis, anytime I was like living alone, my husband was away, but anytime I would say something out loud, it was like, stupid girl, why'd you bend mm-hmm. like that? You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. then me correcting yeah. myself. Anytime I would say something like that, then I would force myself to say out loud, not force myself, but ask myself to, um, (laughs) that's not true because, and list three reasons why that's not true and refute what Mm -hmm. I said. And like, Mm -hmm. and then what did you really mean by that? And I have been doing that now for a, a few years. And I realized literally just last week that the only things that I said out loud while I was in my house alone that day was good job, girl. Like, that was awesome. I'm proud of you. And I'm like, wait a second, is this the same person? Like, oh <laughs> this stuff really, really does work. Mm-hmm. It takes time to create the new neural pathways and it takes time to make them as easily accessible as 
us scanning for threats, like what are, is our default mm-hmm. mode. But mm-hmm. if you just do the simple little things of listen to the way you speak to yourself and then speak to yourself, correcting it in the way that you want to be speaking to yourself and making a habit of just being aware, just be aware mm-hmm. of your thoughts and, and cultivate them to be the way you want them to be. Like <laughs> It really is all yeah. on you and it's lovely. Yeah. I mean, that's great. Like you mentioned that one and that's the the tool that you've been practicing each time because yeah, we can, if we're not too aware, too conscious about what we say to ourselves, we are so mean. <laughs> we are, we are worse than we are to like, Oh my gosh, you're so mean to ourselves. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause that is like stupid or a right. stupid girl or like, and I'm like, I would never say that to somebody in right. life. Why am I exactly. talking to myself like that? That's true. So I, I, I love this, you know, that's not true because there are three reasons mm-hmm. it's not true. And not ne- and, and the thing about it is that not necessarily having to like switch it from, you know, the negative side to positive side. Because I think that's also one of the things that people think when we say positive right. psychology, right? So it's just right. automatically going to the positive, but it's really not. No, it, it's about more bringing it back to truth and accuracy. Yeah. Like, what did you really mean there? What was really happening in that situation? And cultivating your words to be more accurately reflecting what is going on in in your experience at that time, as opposed to reacting to it. If that yeah. Makes sense. yeah. Yeah. And not necessarily like... And yeah, if you can't find something it. true and positive to reframe things as... Zoom out. I promise the further you zoom out, you will find something true and positive. But if if you can only get to true and neutral, that is perfect. Like yeah. that start there right. and use that to build bridges until you feel confident. Like affirmations, if you don't believe what you're saying to yourself, then mm-hmm. you're just using your breath. You're not actually doing anything. And if, in fact, you're putting more pressure on yourself. Yeah. You yeah. Believe what you're saying. So use the in-between words, even if it starts with like, I am open to believing I am powerful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. These are very helpful and very important. And yeah, so I I hope that, you know, for those who are watching this or listening to this, you're able to get a lot of like gems here <laughs> that Kaylee so. shared with us. <laughs> that Kaylee shared with us. And so Kaylee, before we we end, is there anything else that you would like to share that we haven't touched on in this conversation? Just that everybody is important and we're not all meant to be the same. I think that the 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 most fulfilling thing that you can be in this world is just authentically naturally you. Mm. And it sounds so simple, but it's really one of the hardest things to do. But if you just allow yourself to look at yourself with openness and curiosity, and compassion and love, like yeah. that your world will change and don't try to fit somebody else's mold. If it doesn't feel good, that's your opportunity to dive in and get curious. And if it feels good, it's a yes. If it doesn't feel good, dive in. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I love the dive in one. It, it coincides <laughs> or it goes with your, you know, wild adventure in yes. your sailing <laughs> and being on the, yes. the waters. So yeah, so I I appreciate you. And once again, thank you for being here, for sharing your wonderful knowledge, for bringing that sunshine and ray of light. <laughs> and, you know, and I think that's what we need in this world right now. Uh, just to, that kind of positivity that not necessarily a toxic one, you know, but, no. but it's just being open, allowing yeah. yourself to be open to it, that for yeah. this, for positivity to to come in but also bringing a a lot of awareness in there and using tools and practices and some of which that Kaylee shared with us today (laughs) so thank you again Kaylee for thank you so much for having me this is lovely I really appreciate it (laughs) okay you're so welcome thank you for listening to the imagine a life podcast I'm curious to know what were your takeaways from this episode let me know by heading off to francislacuesta.com. Until next time, bye for now.